cosmic microwave background is radiation left over from the birth of the universe. Uh, so what, what does it mean? So it's, it's called the CMB, and those are, uh, those are uh, words I'll use, or those are, those are letters I'll use. And cosmic, of course, means it's from, it's from space. It's from well outside of our galaxy. Microwave means that it emits, this radiation is in the microwave regime of the spectrum. So wavelengths are sort of, uh, you know, anywhere from 10, 20 centimeters down to uh, a millimeter or two. So it's the microwave. And background means, means it's everywhere. So this is the cosmic microwave background. So what is it? We, we now know this is the thermal afterglow of the Big Bang. And it's a distinctive prediction of this model. In the 50s, uh, it was first when people first started to think about this, it was uh, Alpha and Hermann and Gamow who were putting together this picture and thought this could exist. Uh, interestingly, at the same time, Zeldovich thought, and it was related to the hot Big Bang model of the universe, Zeldovich thought the Big Bang was cold and, and therefore this radiation shouldn't exist. Years went by, these initial uh, thoughts on, on its existence were not widely known throughout the world. Uh, the idea was again revived for yet other reasons by, by Bob Dickey in Princeton, and a group in Princeton then started to look for the actual radiation. A group up the road uh, in Bell Labs by Penzias and Wilson uh, were actually doing something completely different. They were, they were make, looking, uh, making astronomical measurements, but also developing uh, uh, technologies for a satellite system. And they they measured it. They found it. They didn't quite know what they had. Uh, they called up Bob Dickey. Uh, Bob Dickey said to his gang, uh, we've been scooped. And, and this was the discovery of the radiation in, in the mid-60s. So what is it? It, it is now this, this, it's this radiation that suffuses the universe. Its temperature we now know to be 2.725 degrees above absolute zero. So why is it cold? It's, a, it's, 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 just, right, it's just a couple of degrees, three degrees above absolute zero. It's cold and because the universe has expanded from when this radiation was first admitted. So the universe started out in a very hot, dense state, and it has been expanding ever since, expanding many, many thousands and thousands of times. So this radiation is now cooled and as, as radiation, as, as you take a radiation and expand it, it and, and, you, and you just move apart the, you make space larger, which is what the expansion of the universe is, it just cools down, cools down, and cools down, and cools down. So it started out enormously hot and is, is now cold. So we can, uh, to give you an idea, so we talked about that this radiation emits and sort of uh, it, it, the wavelength of it is, is uh, 10 centimeters, millimeter, that sort of temperature. We can relate that to, the, say, the temperature of the sun, which is about 6,000 degrees. And the sun, of course, emits radiation we can see with our eyes, hundreds of nanometer radiation. So this is 1,000 times cooler, and so this is emitting in, in the microwave. So that's, that's relation. So what's, why do we think it comes from the early universe? Why do we think it's the signature of the Big Bang? It's because its spectrum, as, as best we can tell, follows this prediction from Planck. That is, it's thermal radiation. And it's, a, it's called black body radiation. It follows a very, very special pattern. It means we can just give one number, and that is we can say it's temperature, and we know how much the radiation is emitted at all frequencies. So one number describes this. And that's a very deep thing, this, that there is just one number that describes the state of the early universe. This is a, a, I mean, this, a very fundamental concept. It almost uh, it tells you something about the simplicity of the early universe. So we, now, so we now know this radiation very well. Uh, it was measured uh, absolutely beautifully by the, by the COBE satellite. 
uh, many measurements before that, but measured beautifully by the COBE satellite and shown to have this uh, uh, special spectrum. Um, and it was also measured at the same time uh, within, a, within a few months by a, a lesser known experiment, but measured also brilliantly by the uh, UBC rocket, rocket experiment with uh, Gush, uh, Wishnow, and Halpern, as well as the, the COBE one led by, by John Mather. And, and actually the measurement isn't so much, this is a subtlety, but it's, it's worth noting, the measurement isn't so much that it has a perfect black body spectrum. The measurement is that it has the spectrum that matches what we think is the best made black Planck spectrum. So there's, there's no absolute measurement of its Planckness. It's a measurement of what we think uh, a Planck spectrum should look like. So this is, so what I've been talking about is the absolute temperature. Uh, you can all go out and measure it. If you have a TV, you can take an antenna and point it up at the sky and tune it to an inactive channel. And it is about, and, and see the static, it is about 1% of the fuzz, of the noise, if you find an inactive channel. About 1% of that is from the cosmic microwave background, is from the birth of the universe. And you can tell it's 1% because the, Roughly the corresponding noise, we, we live in, uh, our environment is about 300 Kelvin. That noise is, is the ultimate limit for the electronics in a TV. Three Kelvin is 1% of that, so 1% of that fuzz comes from the microwave background. Now there are three aspects to consider in this radiation. There are uh, four, let me just talk about three of them right now. They are, uh, one, it's temperature, this 2.725 Kelvin. Now, there's this called the, the dipole term. The dipole term arises because we sort of, we can imagine ourselves in this, in this uh, shell of radiation. The dipole term arises because, the, you know, the Earth is going around the sun. The sun is going around the center of the galaxy. The galaxy is going around their local group of galaxies. And so there is a net sum of velocities with respect to the shell defined by the distant galaxies. And so if we took the overall the universe on average, we have a net velocity with respect to it. So if you take, if you take this radiation, this black body radiation, and now you move with respect to it, that gives you, uh, it's, if you moved with respect to it, in one direction it's hot, and in one direction it's cold. That's called the dipole, hot in one direction, cold behind you. Take away that term, okay, that's about a part in a thousand. Take away that term, and, and then the next thing we see are very slight variations in temperature of this radiation. They're at about the level of a part in a hundred thousand. And it's those very slight variations in radiation that have gotten the attention recently, or most of the attention. And the reason is that we can relate those very slight temperature variations to the processes in the universe that gave rise to all the structure in the universe. This is an amazing thing. So let's try to unwrap that a little bit. So first off, where, where is this radiation? How are we thinking about it, right? Well, if we put up satellites and rockets and we measure it, it must be near us, right? So we are, we are swimming in it, but where does it come from? We can think of this as coming from the very edge of the observable universe, which is, which is a, a difficult concept, but the, here's the light. We know, and now we know it's cold because the universe has expanded, but let's put aside thinking about the expansion for the minute. Just think about the universe as static. Now, we know that the universe has a finite age because uh, it's, well, it's one of the things we, we have determined. It has a finite age. If the light is reaching us now, it must have come from a point roughly the speed of light times the age of the universe away. So this defines a sphere around where we are. And that long ago, we're looking very far back in time. And so we see the universe 
in a much younger stage. We see it at a stage where there were no galaxies, there were no stars, there were no clusters of galaxies. It was just a very simple uh, plasma. A plasma is just a, a configuration of matter where, where the electron, where the hydrogen is ripped apart, the electrons and the protons are separate, and they're in equilibrium with this radiation, in this case the cosmic microwave background radiation. And so we're looking back then, we look back to the edge of the observable universe in this very early time, and we are seeing, we are, we are truly looking at the early universe. Some people like to say it's the baby picture of the early universe, but we're looking at this, that's very early time. And it was way different then. This, this is the precursor to us. And so we see these hot and these cold spots back there. We see them now, as these hot and these cold spots, and we can relate them to variations in the strength of gravity. And then that tells us where the matter was accumulated and not, and it gives us a picture for how structure in the universe started to form. And what we can then think of is between this surface that's very far away, that's roughly the age of the universe times the speed of light away, the history of the universe played out between that surface, the last scattering surface, and us. So as you go back in time, right, telescopes are like time machines. As you go back in time, cosmic history is, is laid out, and this is the start of it. And it, a nice way to think about this is, so here we are in, inside this, this globe. You might ask, well, ha what happens if we went all of a sudden right to the edge of the observable universe? What would we see looking back at us? Well, if all of a sudden we were transported there, we would, see the, we would see galaxies and clusters of galaxies just like there are around us now, if we could instantaneously be transported. And from that point, if we look back to where we are now, we would see the cosmic microwave background that was once where we are now. It's now streamed away. Right? But there's this, there's this wonderful symmetry. We would, we would see then... We, a hot spot that could correspond to the structure that formed where we are now. So those are the, the three elements, and they all tie together with this, with this, the way we think about the universe. We can relate the, the, these uh, hot and cold spots, these bumps and wiggles, if you will, to the formation of all the structure in the universe. And we've arrived at, through studying them, we've arrived at what's called the standard model of cosmology in which six parameters describe everything we can know about the cosmic microwave background and more or less every measurement we can make of the large-scale structure and cosmology of the universe. So the future of this field is extraordinarily rich. We, we, now have, we, we know the basic model, the standard model, but we know there's a lot more to the universe. And this model is so well known now that we can start to ask questions about, about tiny little constituents of it. For example, we are in the process now of using measurements of, of the microwave background to get at, to measure the sum of the masses of neutrinos, elementary particles. This means we're using the whole universe to study fundamental particle physics, right? And over the next few years, you'll see this play out. We're using the universe to look for the properties of, of, all, of other particles. We know, you know the universe has, is made of dark matter. We don't know what the dark matter is. We know it has to be there. There's a cosmological constant. We don't know what that is. That has to, we know it's out there. We don't know quite yet how to interpret it. And then we know the universe is made of the stuff of which we're made, the so-called baryons. But what we're doing now is this, the model is so precise that we can start to ask detailed questions about the constituents. Questions that were once the purview of, of particle physics. That's one thing. Another very exciting frontier is in some models of the very early universe, the, uh, there is gravitational radiation. This gravitational radiation comes right from the birth of the universe. That means fluctuations in, in the fabric of space-time, 
propagate across the universe and, and can, in principle, if they, ex if they exist and are large enough, can be measured. We can look for gravitational radiation from the very early universe and over years we will just study this and study more things. The future of stu these studies of the microwave background is incredibly rich and thinking out longer and longer we will get to a picture through studying this radiation where we have just un unearthed so to speak, unearth the whole picture of the universe from where we are now, all its constituents, all the way out to the edge of the observable universe.